It's a week three of the Ugly Christmas Sweater Crochet Along. Um, we are going to be working on what we're calling Argyle this week. It's going to be a combination of single crochet rows as well as cross stitch into those single crochets. The first thing that we're going to start out with is doing our single crochet background. You won't be able to do any cross stitch until you actually have that in place. And it's going to be nine rows. These are going to be fairly simple, so I'm not going to do a long tutorial on this. Simply add to your corner and chain one, then single crochet, chain three, single crochet in the corner, that'll be your new corner, and simply single crochet in every single crochet across. Now this is what you're going to do for nine rows. On the corners you're going to do your single crochet, chain three, single crochet, that'll be your corner every time. And then when you get to the ends of your round, you're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet. And then you're going to slip stitch into the corner to start in the corner like we do when we're not changing colors, like in these rows that we did in previous weeks. So, um, this is pretty much it to say hello for week three. Um, I'm going to come back here once I have my nine rows in place. And um, just don't forget to count after each round. Make sure that on your sides you're increasing by two stitches each time. So last week when we ended up, we had 64 stitches on each side. So going from here, you're only going to be increasing each row by two on the sides. So we'll have 66, and then the next row will be 68, and then 70, and then 72 um, as it proceeds forward. Um, you're going to end on round 31, and by then you should have 82 single crochet per side. All right, so I will see you after I have my nine rows in place and you have your nine rows in place. All righty. Welcome everybody to section two of the Argyle. We are going to be working on cross stitch today onto a crocheted fabric. Now you've got a graph in front of you. <clears throat> the reason why I wanted to do this with you though is so that you didn't have any questions about where you're supposed to be starting. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my yarn um, basically closed in, not closed in, that's the wrong word, hide my end, there we go, so that I don't have to hide knots, and I'm sorry, this is a really long piece of yarn, so we're going to be doing lots of pulling in the beginning. I usually will grab one really long hank of yarn. Now this might be a little long, actually, because it's feeling a little long, but I had my yarn like so, so where the tip just comes to right there, you can't see it on the front side. And then I will secure it by catching an end and going back in. See the thing with pieces of yarn this long is that you can make knots. You gotta be careful not to make knots. All right, so we are gonna be looking at each one of these stitches as a square box. I'm gonna actually pull this apart a little bit so you can see it. Do you see how each one of those has four corners to it? I'm gonna to talk to this stitch in particular just cause it's kind of right in the middle. There's one, two, three, and four. We're gonna be treating each one of these as though they are a square. So in essence, it's kind of the same way as cross stitch on an eight o'clock. I'm gonna start and count in. We're not working in this row at all. We're gonna start in this row here. But I'm gonna count in two. So I'm gonna actually be doing my very first cross stitch around the second single crochet in on that row. 
So it's going to cross over like so. Now, um, some people will say do all of your legs and then come back with the other set of legs as you go. Like, do all of your right facing legs first and then do all of your left facing legs second. Um, I just kind of make my X's as I go and that's probably why, hang on, I'm gonna show you the back of the finished piece. <clears throat> now I don't think that mine is necessarily ugly. I think that this is what the back of mine looks like. Okay. You could maybe be, you know, neater than me. I'm just gonna show you the way that I do it. All right. And then I will do the next one up. So as in regular crochet, you're gonna to wanna to go directly above, you know, count it like rows. So this would be the one right above my second crochet. So you're gonna, because we're angling inward, you can, if this is easier for you to count this way or if you just naturally get it, you're gonna go up one and over, okay? See, this is that knot I was telling you about. Gotta be careful. All right, so I made my first X there. This is the X right above. So I'm gonna be doing my, or I'm sorry, this is a single crochet right above this one. I'm gonna be doing my next single crochet in this one. So I tend to do my X's like so. Just watch real quick. And then I just will pop over to the next one I know I'm gonna be using. Boy, this is a long piece, isn't it? Because I'm going this way. And then I cross back down. Next one over, so up and over. Up and over. Not this one, but this one. And now the pattern for our cross stitch does not go past this row here. Okay, so this is gonna be the top of our V on our Argyle. So 
So we're gonna need to start going the opposite direction, pointing in the opposite direction. So not only are we going back down, but we're angling away from where we're going because we wanna keep our stitches going like so. Now, you may want to go along here and mark some. Give me just a second, I'll be right back. All right, so when you look on the pattern for the cross stitch itself, you're gonna see that there is three above and three below this one stitch here. I use this as kind of my um, center counting. So the rest of my end that's gonna be coming up matching along here is going to be this stitch, this stitch, and this stitch, which lines up perfectly with our starting stitch. Okay, I'm gonna mark that one because that's I know I'm gonna be ending up there. I'm gonna count down one, two, three, and I'm gonna mark that one. So when I come back over here to um, start the other portion of my argyle, I know where to start and I know where my ending point is. Now to help us find our way down, you're gonna notice that there are four stitches, or let me make sure of that. No, there are five stitches, I'm so sorry, that was wrong with me. I don't have the graph right in front of me Otherwise, I would have had that figured out. But there are one, two, three, four, five before this stitch, and there's one, two, three, four, five after. So it would be good for you to mark this stitch as well because that lets you know your trajectory going south. Um, There's one skip here, so you'll go into then this one here. Sorry about that. And I still do my X's exactly the same. I make each X as I go. Like I said, it's probably not even the super right way, but you know what? I achieve my goal of putting an X on my crochet fabric, right? This is about fun, not necessarily perfection. All right, so I'm doing exactly the same thing as I did before where I am visually gauging, like this would be the stitch right below um, what I've already done. So I know I have to go over one. So when I put this in, I actually make my needle come out so that when I go to make my X, I'm already in position. punching the camera and I do apologize for that. Um, it's because my yarn, because it's so long, keeps catching on my pant leg and I'm having to yank. So don't do that. Don't let it catch on your pant leg. All right, so I'm gonna go in here, coming out over here. So as you can see, we're on target to end up exactly where we wanna be. I decided to go with gray on my lime green because I think that it helps to bring that silvery tone in my white up into the rest of the design without necessarily having to be sparkly because my inspiration picture in the white itself had a lot of a gray tone to it because of the metallic sparkle of it. 
And believe it or not, my husband actually helped me choose all of my colors. And he was the one that pointed out, he said, oh, there's this yarn here. And he pulled it off the shelf, which was this yarn here. And he said, this would be perfect. I'm like, oh my God, you're picking out my yarn now. I was very proud of him. So we have achieved our bottom. Where we wanted to be. Now, it's not gonna hurt you if you take and go along the top and or the bottom and mark all of the bottoms and all of the tops. Cause it's gonna be the same amount of stitches between. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. And this is going to be your top because there's going to be five one two three four five that'll be your center and of the of the um, peak as you can see it matches and goes all the way up all right let's go ahead and continue up now we are going back up in the other direction So we will skip the one immediately above and we will X right next to it. Always eyeing up the next one over. this X, put it in here, bring it up over here. This part is just going to take patience. But if you persevere and work through, even if it seems really difficult to deal with at first, once you get into a rhythm, it flows pretty well. And this is a nice thing to work on when you're sitting at night and you're binging on a Netflix show or watching your Jack Ryan on Prime or whatever it is you like to see. Or even if you're brave enough to bring out your Christmas movies already. Whatever you're watching. This can be relaxing, I promise. And then the last one, so we'll move this. Now, I am going to go ahead and let this one, this piece of yarn hang out for a little while. Because I wanna work on over here, having you come back and start over here. So I'm gonna like this we'll just leave that guy over there and this time we're going to get a much more manageable piece of yarn I'm going to tuck my ends in the seam find where I'm going to be starting and Hide my end. Okay, maybe that's just as long. Goodness gracious. I don't know how to pull short pieces, apparently. I guess I feel like 
<clears throat> excuse me, the longer my piece is, the less ends I have to tuck in. All right, now I'm hiding. There, doesn't poke out in the front, which is good. I guess I'm gonna kind of leave that there for a second so I make sure I put my needle in the right spot. And now I'm gonna take it out. Okay, now starting up here. Gonna pull it the same. Now remember we're working in the downward trajectory so it's gonna be down and over. So put it in, poke it out. Now, you should be meeting up with the X you already put when you were going upward. Leaving three above and three below. And in cases like this, rather than pulling a long piece of yarn across so that it hangs out, I will just go along and pick up a couple of pieces to tuck my yarn in. So that I can move it down here without having a huge crossover, although that is still a little bit bigger than I like, but I'm going to march forward. For me, as long as I've got ends that are not going to necessarily be big enough to catch a finger in, then it's going to be okay. It's going to live. Because um, where damage is going to come into your blanket is if you've got ends that people can actually snag or get caught up in when they are using your lovely, warm, snuggly Christmas blanket. Alrighty, so we've hit our bottom. Now we're gonna start going back up. Once again, we're gonna be intersecting here. So you just find those pieces along the back side to tuck your yarn into. Headed up towards this one right here. So we want to kind of grab as we go across to better position the yarn. And see, none of this shows up on the front side because we're just grabbing loops from the back side. So you don't have to worry about whether or not your pretty design out here is going to get messed up. Okay. probably cross-stitch purists that are just having heart attacks watching me do this. 
All right, going back down. So don't want this guy because it's right underneath. We want this guy. So we're gonna put in and poke out here. Now on my original design, I did the same color for everything all across. You can choose if you want to, I'm just gonna make one more pass over here, to do a different colored uh, center to each of the Argyle diamonds if you wanted to. You don't have to stick with the same color yarn if you wanted to bring an accent tone in there that would be that would be great that'll make it pop um so like i've got a couple of colors here i could do like a teal in the center of my diamond i could do a deep red in the center of my diamond uh, i could do the light aqua tone well that's too matchy matchy for me um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do as far as the center stitch. Um, let's finish this real quick. Okay, so this obviously is going to continue all the way across your side. Also going to set this. Sorry for hitting the camera again. Set this aside. Okay, that's not too scary, huh? It's okay that your corners are going to be naked. That's all right. You you just want this pattern to fit from here over to here. And where you're going to be actually ending on each of these rows is even though we started the second one in over here, we're going to be finishing our rows on the exact final stitch of each row. Okay. It won't finish exactly in the same place where it started. All right, I'm gonna just real quick do, I think I liked the teal the best in there. I just have to find the end of my yarn here. I'm gonna, I really, really am cutting off a very small piece for this. You could do a different color in the center of each one of these diamonds if you wanted to. You don't have to make anything match. The application for me is going to be the same, but I'm going to be doing a much smaller area just because it's a really small stitch. All right, now we have one, two, three, four, five stitches going across the center. We want to put our X on this one because it is the exact center stitch of the whole diamond. If you count going up, there's one, two, three, four, five. If you count going across, there's one, two, three, four, five. This is the exact center stitch of the Argyle. Okay, so you could do it like this where you've got a different color. You could put your main color in the center. Either way, um, you know, if you're gonna be doing it with the main color, you may want to incorporate your stitch happening at the same time as you're going across. Um, you know, whatever is comfortable for you. All right. 
obviously, if you have any questions, please contact us. Um, if, if you need extra tutorials on how to do um, cross stitch on crochet surfaces, we will try to find something more for you to work on just for practicing if this is confusing for you. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me for part two. Make sure that you finish up all the way around. You're just gonna keep doing this and following your, your chart. Uh, you have a great rest of your week and I will see you for week five.